many Filipinos grew up learning about three waves of people settling the Philippines, the Aitas, Indonesians, and Malays. This idea, developed in the early 1900 by Otley Bayer, is like a basic story, but science shows a more interesting truth. Modern genetic studies act as time capsules holding the key to the past within our DNA. These studies paint a more intricate picture, revealing at least five distinct migrations that shaped the Filipino population over a staggering 50,000 years. This isn't just about different groups showing up. It's a story of adventure, figuring things out in a new place, and the amazing strength of the people who built the Philippines. Let's move beyond the simple story and explore the real history of how the Philippines became the amazing place it is today. The idea of three distinct migration waves settling the Philippines, Negritos, Indonesians, Malays, is considered outdated by most experts. Modern research paints a richer picture. Instead of just three waves, two prevailing theories suggested origins, out of Taiwan and out of Sundaland. These propose that Austronesian ancestors arrived either from Taiwan in the north or from Sundaland, an ancient landmass connecting islands to Borneo and mainland Southeast Asia. But new studies on genes say something different. In 2021, researchers looked at DNA from different Filipino groups and found out a more complicated story. They think there were at least five different times when people moved to the Philippines in the last 50,000 years. This new idea shows that Philippine history is really interesting and complicated. Different groups of people came at different times, making the Filipino population diverse and rich in history. Let's go back about 70,000 years to East Africa, where humans first started their journey out of Africa. Some went west towards Europe and the Middle East, while others went east towards Asia. When the travelers reached Asia, they faced a big problem, the massive Himalayan mountains. They had two main routes to take. Some people went north of the Himalayas and settled in Europe and Asia. Other groups went south of the Himalayas. They were called Basil Australasians because of their darker skin. Some of them stayed in India, while others continued their journey eastward. Those who traveled eastward reached a landmass called Sundaland. So what is Sundaland? During those times, the world experienced an ice age, where much of the water froze into glaciers, lowering sea levels. Because of this, many lands emerged, including a large landmass in Southeast Asia called Sundaland, which connected previously separate islands like Borneo, Java, and Sumatra to mainland Asia. This is also said to be an important land bridge where the story of the ancient Filipinos begins. Some of the early Basal Australasians, or what we now call Basal Sundas, migrated eastward to Australia and Papua New Guinea. This explains why almost all ancestors of Papua New Guineans are indigenous and original people of the Philippines. However, we're focusing on those who traveled northeast to the Philippines around 50,000 years ago. They became the Philippine Negritos, the earliest Filipinos. Migration was possible because most of the Philippine islands were connected at that time. According to research, there were two possible routes taken by the Negritos, the northern route leading to Luzon through the islands of Palawan and Mindoro, and the second was the southern route where they passed through the Cebu Strait towards Mindanao. It also suggests that the Philippine Negritos were among the first to sail the seas. Those Negritos who lived in Luzon are called Northern Negritos, while those in Mindanao are called Southern Negritos. These two groups represent the two waves of migration to the Philippines. After thousands of years, approximately 15,000 years ago, another group of people arrived in Southeast Asia. These were the Basal East Asians. They were descendants of those who journeyed north of the Himalayas, contrasting with the Australasians who went south. Upon reaching Southeast Asia, 
Some Basal East Asians settled in Sundaland and its surrounding areas. However, about 12,000 years ago, the end of the Ice Age began, resulting in the melting of ice sheets and a rise in sea levels. Because of this, the low-lying areas of Sundaland became submerged. As a result, many Basal East Asians living in Sundaland relocated to higher ground in the surrounding areas or sought new islands to inhabit. One such group migrated to Mindanao and spread across the island. Eventually, they became the ancestors of the Manobo people who live in Mindanao today. These ancestral Manobo are recognized as the third wave of migration to the Philippines. As the ancestral Manobo were settling in the Philippines, another group of Basal East Asians spread across East Asia. Some migrated to China and became known as the Ancestral Cordillerans, while others moved to the sinking Sundaland and became known as the Ancestral Austroasiatics. From around 8,000 to 12,000 years ago, some Austroasiatics migrated to the southwest of the Philippines, particularly in the Sulu Archipelago and the coasts of northeastern Borneo. These became the ancestors of the Sama people living there today. Some of the Sama groups in the Philippines are the Sama de Vao and Sama de Lao. The Sama are a unique ethnic group known for their adept sailing skills and ocean-centric lifestyle. They represent the fourth wave of migration to the Philippines. And as I mentioned earlier, there were also Basal East Asians, known as the Ancestral Cordillerans, who arrived in southern China 12,000 years ago. Following the northward migration of the northern Negritos, southern Negritos, ancestral Manobo, and ancestral Sama, there was also a southward migration of the ancestral Cordillerans. This migration took place in waves and groups between 7,000 and 10,000 years ago, likely influenced by climate change as the land bridge from China to Taiwan submerged due to rising sea levels. But take note, that the ancestral Cordillerans are distinct from the Chinese people we know today. The ancestors of the present day, Han Chinese arrived in the Philippines approximately 5,000 years ago after the migration of the ancestral Cordillerans who had moved southward earlier. They mark the fifth wave of migration to the Philippines. The arrival of the ancestral Cordillerans marked their integration with earlier groups that had migrated to the islands. The language they spoke, Austronesian, eventually became the dominant language, influencing not only local languages across the islands, but also the broader Malay languages. The islands were not the final destination for many of these groups. Many continued their journey eastward, reaching Polynesia and Melanesia. Climate change played a significant role in shaping these migrations, showing how greatly nature influenced human movements. Migration to the islands did not cease with these early waves. Throughout history, various groups arrived and departed for different reasons, but that history is a story for another time. That's all for now. Thank you.